Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. We are doing, what are we now? We're June, so May. We're on, we're doing May and planning for June. Um, I am just gonna like, sh um, just basically say now, I'm having a really bad couple of days. Um, it's, I will let you know at the end what's going on, but I feel like I've lost a little bit of my spark and for that I apologise. Um, but if I don't get this video out, then I've got four clients tomorrow and, and a very, very busy week going forward. So I don't know when I'm going to be able to get this video out. Um, but if anyone's interested with what's going on, <laughs> stay till the end. Uh, I will let you know when all the cross stitch is done, but that's kind of just a word of warning that I'm feeling a little bit rubbish right now. Um, so anyway, I digress. That said, let's get on with this month's stitching. Um, I, I think I've pretty much done my whip go for this month and filled in the gaps for anything that I hadn't done last month. I have a little bit of haul. I have um, a random act of kindness from someone who is very lovely. Um, I Oh, actually, there is actually something that I'm missing, so just bear with me one second. Okay, I'm back, sorry about that. Um, yes, so, where was I? I received a random act of kindness, which was absolutely lovely. I'll go through that. I have, I've ordered some fabric, um, which was just probably the icing on the cake with everything that's been going on this month, um, with regards to the reason why I had to order the fabric, and <laughs> I'll let you know in a second. Um, I do have a new pattern, but that was the uh, random act of kindness, which was really lovely. And I have got, they actually arrived yesterday, which is nice. I have got um, some Silks For You threads I've got two. So let's do the let's do the haul and random act of kindness first. Now <coughs> excuse me. I also kind of had to put the air conditioning on as well because it's so hot in here. If you have been following me for a while, you know that I was doing oh it actually helps to put my microphone on, doesn't it? Uh you would you would know that I have been doing a project called Henry the Eighth, and a lovely lady called Margarita. Uh, she is one of my followers, subscribers. She got in touch on Instagram and asked me if she could send me a postcard. And she thought that it was, um, you know, similar to the Henry the Eighth that you know I'm doing, which it is, which is lovely. It's this. That was really, really kind of her. Um, and it looks, it does look very similar to the project that I'm doing. So I just expected to have this through the door, but actually what came through the door, which is really sweet of her, and she's got me a card and she's written some bits on the back, but I'll, I'll leave that, like, because that's kind of personal, so I'll leave that sort of here. Um, but she also bought me, and I don't know how I'm going to do this, because I've always been a, a long dog sampler girl on pattern keeper but she also bought me this really beautiful pattern by um, long dog sampler pattern keeper it's called the uh, quinto acuto um, which is a classic gothic arch and it is i'm not too i think it must be somewhere like italy and it's absolutely beautiful it's a lovely chart I haven't started it yet, but with that, she bought some floss. She sent me some floss, which was really sweet. So this is, what is this? Cut a grand, it says broidery, embroidery. I'm not too sure. Oh, it's a DMC. Okay, so it's DMC. And obviously it's a variegated floss, which is really, really pretty. Um, so thank you so much for that Margarita. I really appreciate that. That's very very sweet of you um, 
I will enjoy doing this chart. I might have to see if I can get it onto Pattern Keeper first, or I might just have to bite the bullet and then just put my big girl pants on and do it from the pattern. But that was really sweet of you. It was, you know, not expected. And yeah, thank you so much. So I also bought some floss from Silks For You. And I don't really know where I'm gonna use this one, but I literally saw it and fell in love with it. And it's just so bizarre that I would fall in love with this floss because it's just so not me. But look at this. Isn't that beautiful? So it's got like purples and pinks and yellows and greens and blues. It's just absolutely gorgeous. And this one is called, is this number is PR140. PR140. It's just gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful floss. And then the other one that I bought, which I bought for a pandemic, because I'm thinking, I'm thinking about starting that one, is this one, which is like a variegated sort of purpley color thread. Um, really, really gorgeous. Very, very gorgeous. And this one is PR129. So yeah, that's really, really lovely. PR129 that one is. So I look forward to starting a project with that too. Now, <laughs> oh my goodness. So obviously, I don't think actually this, I don't think it was, so last month, I think it was last month, I had a massive issue with rain and had a flooding issue that a lot of my cross stitch just decided that it was going to get rained on and I had to kind of wash everything that needed washing. So the thing is, is that I don't even think that this piece of Oh man, seriously, I don't even think that this project got wet at all or even did it even get washed. I don't think it did. Uh, so I'm just going to come out and say it. Make sure that when you put your fabric in your Q-snap or whatever snap or whatever Uh, make sure you put it in the right way. This is supposed to be this way. This is the one that I dyed. I have no idea how I did it. It's an absolute nightmare. Um, yes, I just did all of the stitching I was supposed to do before. <laughs> I actually realized, because I moved the Q-snap just to move, yeah, what a mess. So this is what I'm left with. So I put something out on the Cross Stitch Unlimited Facebook group and asked if there's anyone that knows any company that does something similar to this color, because I just can't be bothered to, you know, I just can't be bothered to like do the whole dyeing process now. Um, it's easy, but it's a lot of faff and I've just got too much going on right now. So I looked at a company called Rogue, is it Rogue Stitching, Rogue Cross Stitch, and I came across a fabric, and I kid you not, because I will, I'll put it up on the screen, which was kind of exactly the same color as this, and this is what I received. It's too purple. It's not the right color. And also, I thought I asked for, um, what do you call it, like opalescence, which clearly I didn't, so that's, that's on me, that's fine. But this is what it looked like, you know, when I ordered it. And this is the color it's come. Now, I do appreciate that there is a color variance and everything, but really this was what was on the color. Um, so as you can tell that it's like more of like a heather, a dark heather color, I guess, aubergine heather color. I am, um, I'm so beyond annoyed at myself. I can't bother to pick out all those stitches. <sighs> So I am going to have to get in contact with them with regards to this, I'll send it back. I'm actually going to see if I can get 28 count because you know what, when, and it's the same with anything, when things are dyed, you end up with a smaller K 
account, don't you? So I'm gonna see if I can send it back. I'm happy to pay to send it back, that's fine. Um, and see, and explain to them that like this is the color I need. Now I do know that, this is a picture of this plus, it's called French Lilac. Now I do know that there is always variances in colors. So what I will do is I'll explain to them the color that I need, which is this color and hoping she can dig through her fabric and she can get one that is as close to this colour as possible that is opalescent and that is a 28 count because it will probably end up being a 32 count if it was 28 count to start with so I think that's what I'm going to do but yes, what a nightmare so we ended up buying some fabric which I didn't really want to buy uh, but I ended up doing this is before I realized I ended up doing 747 stitches on that. I had to think, I think I had to do a thousand stitches. Um, and as I went to meet, move my Q-snap and then I was like, oh, and you know, I, I did have a look to see if I could squeeze it on, but I can't, it just goes off, it goes off. So yes, so what a nightmare. So that was the first thing that kind of happened this month. <laughs> um, yeah so let's get on to some stitching i am probably going to just do it in the order that i've got here um just trying to think what's the best way of doing it yeah probably just the order i've got it here so the first one i'm going to show you is she says i think i did dahlia last month i'm getting confused so I think I did some that was supposed to be for this month, last month, and then vice versa. So I'm just gonna put Dahlia over there because you've seen it. So the first one I'm gonna show you is Pink Peonies. Uh, I think I had to do, so I saved that for this month. It was on last month, but because I had to do 500 full coverage fanatics and 500 on um, my whip go, I saved it for this month so I could just work on it throughout. And I ended up doing like a thousand and nineteen stitches so this is charted by me pink peonies really really pretty I'm gonna see if I can get this to show together now the good thing is is that not a lot of this frame has been stitched so I should be able to show what was done last time so I'm stitching this on 22 22 count 20 count two over no oh my goodness 20 i'm stitching this on 20 count one over one um bear with me one second let me let me try. <laughs> give me one sec let me just try and sort my life out one second so if i pop this in here right okay so this is where we are at the moment and like i said how I'm gonna best do this around my microphone. Um, I'm gonna see if I can add the other bit here as well. So there we are. That's where we're at, at the moment. 20 count one over one. Um, yeah, a thousand stitches. I do love working on this one. It's really lovely. Let's see if I can get this a little bit closer for you. great coverage so that one's coming along which is great I mainly I think worked on so sort of this here area here and then I think this area here um, yeah so where are we with this yeah I think it was just basically in this area and then some of this area down here filling in the gaps so that's where I worked for that one. Okay, so that was pink peonies. I am now at, where am I? Pink peonies, 2.42%. It's not a lot really, is it? Actually, it's a bit rubbish. Okay, the next one I worked on, which actually, is a new start that I did a couple of months ago but it won't be on my whip go because it was like a new start this year 
Um, and I'm actually going to replace the Quaker that I had on my Whip Go with this Quaker. Now, the Quaker that I had before is going to be, um, I'm going to UFO it. Uh, I just, I'm not happy with the silks for you colour that came. So I know obviously there's a difference, but it was, I thought it was going to be like more pink purple, but it's more green. Uh, so it's not a colour that I'm, I'm really enjoying sort of using at the moment. So I've decided to switch out the Quaker to this one here, which is the British flag um, or the Union Jack, whichever you want to call it. Um, I have changed some of the colours. On this one, it says to use, uh, maybe I haven't got the right one. It doesn't tell you what colours it's told you to use but the colors that I've picked out are different. So I am using for the gray bit, and the reason I'm using for the gray bit, this bit here, all these bits, is because I'm doing it on a, like an antique white sparkly fabric. And if the color, I think it's, I can't remember what the color is called for. If it's too light, then you don't get to see the definition in the patterns within the fabric. So I've gone for number two, DMC number two. Well, this is CXC thread, so rose, rose to me, I think these will be. Rose to me, rose to you, rose to you, or rose to me, one of them. Um, so number two, I've gone for number 312, which is the blue, which is this blue. The 939 is correct. That is the same as the 939 on here still. Uh, which goes between these squares and then the red is number 321 so and that obviously looks a lot brighter than it is it's actually a little bit darker but it's a really nice uh, combination I do really like the blue together now I will show you what I mean so this wasn't obviously supposed to be my whip go this month but I really fancy doing a little bit I have done 500 stitches I'm at 2.76 percent I'm stitching this on 32 count two over two I will put a picture up of where I was last month or last time you saw it and then here we are now so I'll show you and then I'll move it you forwards now do you see what I mean about being able to see the shapes within if you have a two a light a gray because it is basically light grey, you miss all the definition in in the in the in the middle of the flag. You actually miss all of the the definition. You can't pick it up because it just goes into one. So all you end up seeing is the red and the blue. So this is 32 count two over two, and I'm using CXC threads or rose rose to me. I think they're called rose to me. So this is the thousand stitches I did on this one. Was it? Uh, hang on. No, it was 500, my mistake, 500 stitches. But it's really pretty, isn't it? It's lovely. So, yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be lovely when it's, you know, got a bit more on it. And I, because it's very bulk color, you know, you can literally just take a, a thread, a color and run with it. Um, there's not so much start and stopping of colors. It actually stitches up really, really quick. So obviously I've got my um, cross stitch on one of these organizers which I absolutely love but yeah so that wasn't called for this month however I have switched out the Quaker I don't know if I can't even I don't even know where it is and um, I've put that in as the Quaker so this should be coming up more this year okay the next one that I stitched on what oh actually no I've got the Quaker here funnily enough okay this is it this is the one that I started and it's got like too much green in it. I don't know, I'm just not loving the colors. Maybe it's just me. So I decided not to continue, but that's that's the Quaker that started. Um, I don't know, it's difficult, isn't it? Just, just not loving it. And if you're not loving it, you're not loving it. You can't really do anything about that. It just is what it is. Right, the next one I worked on was enchanted snowman now I had to do how many stitches a thousand stitches on this one 
This is Enchanted Snowman by Donna Gelsinger, uh, charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. Uh, the Quaker Flag was an Etsy project. So yeah, by Donna Gelsinger. I'm loving this one. I'm loving that I feel like I'm a little bit further forward in it at the moment. So I'm stitching, stitching this one on 20 count one over one. And I did 1,019 stitches. I'm um, at 8.25%. And I might have to do like a top and bottom of like where it was last time. So let's see where we are. So that's where we are now. Let me see if I can get, there we go. And then if I move this forward, you can see, see it a bit better. 20 count one over one. Yeah, mainly, so with this one, I was mainly filling in gaps. Um, yeah, as you can see, there's a little bit more definition in this now, which is great. So just filling in this area and then any gaps I've got in, in other, in other, other areas. But yeah, I enjoyed, I really did enjoy working on this one this month. Very, I can't even believe, like, I don't even know how many stitches I did this, this month. I've did 500, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. Well, I did about five and a half thousand stitches this month. Now, I know that's not really a lot compared to some people, but I did also have 21 clients uh, across uh, a um, sports massage client. So I had 21 of them this month. So it's been a really busy month work-wise, which is great. So we are. Okay. Um, the next one is, and I love this. I love this. So... I think I was supposed to do this this month rather than last month. Can't remember now. Blue Rhapsody. This one is a Rosewood Manor. And I am doing this in blue jeans and Delft Blue, I think it's called. Both are from 123 Stitch and I think they are classic color works I can't remember can't remember but oh my gosh I I love this so I started with this I've got in there the number of stitches I did was a lot because I don't have this on pattern keeper so I don't know how many stitches I've done per day and I don't know what the percentage is but it was quite a lot this is also done on a very slightly gray fabric which is 32 count two over two so I'm going to show you what this looked like last time and try and show you what it looks like now Let's see where we go with that. So if I pull this back, then hopefully I'll be able to show you what it looked like before in the corner. Um, yeah, there we are. And then, so yeah, this is, this is it really. Isn't it gorgeous? Don't you find the colors just beautiful? So they're two different blues. One's like a light blue. They're, they're both variegated slightly. One's a very light, variegated blue and the other one is a very um is not overly dark but a little bit darker like blue jeans color and that's also variegated so this is so beautiful and this is where i am with this one and i absolutely love it so yeah love 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 that one um so yeah, I've just put in there a lot because I don't really know how many stitches I've done. I mean, I probably have done about 600 maybe-ish. Um, one down, three across is, I've shown you that one. Enchanted Snow on, yes. Pink Peonies, yes. Right, Bountiful. Okay, Bountiful book. Bountiful bookshelf is my biggest project that I've got at the moment. Um, it's artwork is by Amy Stewart and then it is chartered by Heaven and Earth Designs. This is a super size and a max color, absolutely humongous. And I do love reading. Um, even though I haven't done any reading for the last God knows how long, because when I'm stressed about something, it's, it's all I can do to think about it. And I, I'm not very good at switching off. 
so I can't read because what I find is I'll start reading and then I'll start stressing about what I'm stressing about and then before you know what I've read two pages and I'm like I don't even I don't even understand what I read <laughs> so I have to go back so I'm stitching this on 18 count two over one I had some months to make up for this one I've done over a thousand stitches I actually didn't have 2,000 stitches to do, I thought I did, but no, that was shared with um, Bookshelf, not Bountiful Bookshelf. So I've got Bountiful Bookshelf, which is this one, and then I've got Bookshelf, which I'll show you in a minute. But we have started on the um, the larger, the second, uh, one, two, three, this is the fourth book. So I'll bring it back so you can see like the difference here, but mainly worked on this area here and the Cinderella but this is really beautiful did a little bit up here but not too much so yeah this is casual bookshelf um, this is a bit of the other oops hang on hang on a minute looks like I have done something with my microphone Hold on a second. I think I pulled it off with this fabric fabric got caught so yeah um that's one of the other books as you can see it's almost it's kind of almost finished now i understand that i have still got some rogue stitches to do but i'm it's in a small q snap so i can kind of keep changing the q snap and moving it and then just filling in the gaps now i do fully appreciate that that it probably should have been done before however I thought I had like 2,000 stitches to do, so I was like, okay, where can I go that I can get the most amount of stitches in quicker? When you're putting in rogue stitches or a few stitches here and there, it takes so much time and obviously with the work commitments I had last month as well, I just didn't have a huge amount of time. So that is a bountiful bookshelf. And then bookshelf, which is what I, oh, it's there. Um, explain to you just now I needed to do how many did I do on this one over a thousand just I think it's like a thousand I had to do so it's a thousand and this a thousand and I'm bountiful um, I'm at 74.38% of this one so I'm kind of getting there this was an Etsy pattern as well by New Dream Stitch loving this one um, I'm stitching this on 18 count two over one the same as what I'm doing bountiful again I'm gonna see if I can just do this where you can see like both of them together but I'm not sure so yeah over a thousand stitches I did for this one and this is kind of where we are now um, let me see if I can pull this back a little bit so I colour completed 608 or 680, whichever is like this um, orange. That was colour com colour completed. Um, what else was colour completed? I think that was kind of it. I got. I definitely definitely feel like I colour completed two colours. Can't remember what the other one was, but this is where we are now. Yeah, 74.38 percent. So I'm nearly at 80 with this one so it's coming along well coming along well and then I have no idea why because I'm oh I think it was on last month's number 18 oh no 18 was March I think I just again I was really really behind on um, my whip go so I ended up doing the, um, what do you call it? All Hallows Eve, and for some reason, I don't have All Hallows Eve with me. So just bear with me one second. Okay, I'm back. I actually took the opportunity to heat up my tea as well. <laughs> so um, obviously I was like two months behind. I had no idea. So All Hallows Eve is um, chartered by Heaven and Earth Designs. And the artwork is by Donna Gelsinger, which is here. Which I absolutely love. I love this piece. I love the colours. This is just, I'm so looking forward to this coming out at, um, around um, Halloween time. So I did 
1023 stitches and I'm at 0.88%. I am stitching this on 20 count one over one. All full CXC as you know. And this is where we are now. So I'll try and put the other one here. So you can see, doesn't obviously it doesn't seem like a lot, but compared to yeah, I mean we're getting there, we're getting there. So yeah, loving this one, love working on it. Um it's just it's just an easy an easy stitch because there is a lot of bulk colour and sometimes you know when you've had a stressful day or you know you've you're tired and or tired mentally when you're not sleeping, which is kind of me at the moment. Um, you just you just don't want anything that's too like changing, switching, swatching colours. So it works great. Okay. So that was bookshelf and all Hallows Eve. The next one that I was going to show you is Peacock Love. Now this came up twice this month number 13 and 19 this was just this one peacock love absolutely love this one i am at 79.22 percent on this we're almost at 80 percent and i did i swear i did over a thousand stitches on this one but it's saying that i only did 558 but i don't believe that i think i swear i did more than that so anyway, I'm stitching this 18 count two over one. And I'm gonna get it and do the same. I'm gonna see if I can put it in the corner. So this is where we are now. So worked mainly on this area here, a little bit through here. This was mainly color completing colors. Um, and I think I've color completed another five or six colors. So we're getting there she's started to come through so we've got the he pe peacock and we've got the girl peacock that's starting to to show as well so yeah looking forward to when i can actually put that in a really nice frame so that is peacock days um and then the last but not least this was supposed to be done this month but i did it last month oops I switched uh, sweet, uh, sweet Life and um, what's this one called? Alternative Reality over because I had two numbers come up for Sweet Life next month. So I thought I'll get this one done this month and then instead of getting um, Sweet Life last month doing 500 stitches and next month doing 500 stitches, sometimes it's easier just to do all the stitches when it's out. So I switched the projects. So. Um, alternative reality by this is by Josephine Wall and it's chartered by Heaven and Earth Designs and I don't have this one on a snap a Q-snap or a, I took this one off one of the main frames because I put this on a Q-snap so I did 502 stitches on this one and my I'm at 15.99% which is a little bit rubbish really and I'm going to see, but it's so big. I'm going to see if we can get this before and after. Actually, you might be able to do that, yeah. So if I bring this up here, I'm stitching this on 18 count two over one. And it's CXC thread, full CXC thread, full CXC thread. Um, mainly, I can't even remember where I stitched. I think I was mainly in this area here. Yeah, I think that's where I was mainly. But yeah, so honestly, I've got so much rubbish on my fabrics. They are really going to need a deep clean when I when I go to frame these. So yeah, that's where we are with this one. Enjoy working on this one. This is this is great. Um, what is going on here then? Oh, right, that's fine. I thought I had something else on it, but I didn't. It's fine. So yes. This is a Josephine Wall alternative reality. Um, it's just a really beautiful, it just really is such a beautiful piece. I just love the colours of this. Isn't that gorgeous? Uh, yes, again, I know I've moved on and I haven't fully finished, but 
it's okay, it's on Pattern Keeper. I know that before I go down that I will 100% finish the colours. I'm really rubbish for that. I'm really rubbish for like doing my one and two rogue stitches, but I will get it done. It's only because I've always been in such a blooming hurry to get, what I need really is for, for me to like not have such a busy month and think, right, okay, so which projects am I gonna work on this time? and I'm only going to work on the rogue stitches so if I get 200 stitches done that's fine that's 200 stitches that is like complete if that makes sense in areas that need to be completed so yeah 70 so 15.99 percent on that one and 502 stitches so that covers everything I was supposed to do last month so let's talk about plans so Plan wise, I don't think I'm going to be as busy this month as I was last month uh, regard to my spots massage therapy because I, th I found that I do have a lot of clients that do every other, that have me every other day, sorry, every other day, oh my gosh, so it's been that kind of um, couple of days. So I have clients that have me every other month and some have me like every three months. But it just so happened that last month, everyone that was like every other week, every other month and every two or three months all wanted me together plus I had one lady who had six horses so um that was busy six horses one day almost killed me so I don't know what it's going to be like I've also got an event on the 21st 22nd and 23rd and my finally finally we've got my um my supplement my turmeric supplement going live on Facebook ads on Monday so I've got a really healthy uh, Facebook ad budget which should attract about 100,000 people and I feel like it's probably going to fall on its face but you never know I'm just really really hoping that it gets me out of this situation that I'm in at the moment and um, you know is successful it needs to be successful it really does so let's talk plans so whip go this month was number two and 25 so on stitches that are under 100,000, on my projects where I've got 100,000 or under stitches, number two is A Sweet Life, and number 25 is Chinese Flowers. Now, if you haven't seen Chinese Flowers for a while, because they've not been out. So A Sweet Life is this one, and I need to do um, 1,000 stitches on this one this month. This one is by Amy Stewart, and it's charted by Heaven and Earth Designs, beautiful, beautiful flowers. Um, sorry, beautiful colours. I'm stitching this one on 20 count, one over one. Um, I think I've got the project in here, so you can I can show you a little bit of what I've done so far, which is like next to nothing. Um, but yeah, that's kind of like where we are, pretty much. So I'm gonna do another thousand stitches on this. So that's a sweet life by Amy Stewart. And then, so Chinese flowers. This is the one that I bought from. AliExpress and it's a, a count is it not counter cross stitch it's a um a stamped cross stitch kit now not my not my the best thing in the world I will show you what it looks like picture wise but you're probably not even going to know because it's so difficult to kind of tell um yeah I mean like it's it's not true to color believe me because I'll tell you why if I bring out some of these threads so for example like these threads here are kind of quite dark so if I show you what it will look like <laughs> well sort of what it will look like um, obviously we're not true to color are we because there are some like really deep colors in there um, this color um, this color so these are hydrangeas, I believe. And I'll show you what my kit looks like. I don't even know how many I've done, how many stitches I've done on this, but I think 300, I've done 300. So I'm starting from the bottom. So this is the kit. This is the stamps kit. Um, this did make it onto my whip go board this month, this year because I started this last year and I basically started 
at the bottom and left hand corner and there we are um these are 14 count i believe it's two over one i'm doing this on 14 count two over one so um i don't know i'm gonna do it because i'm interested to see like what it turns out at but i don't hold out much hope we'll see yeah i'm gonna like i said i'm gonna do it but this is one i think would be nice i can just sit in front of the tv and not put it on a frame and just sit and do it um so yeah we'll see how that goes we will see how that goes so that was chinese uh what have i got it chinese flowers i have to do 500 stitches on that one i might just do i mean yeah i'll do 500 so i don't know we'll see how it goes see how it goes again that's done by pattern so i can't um put it in pattern keeper so i wouldn't be able to tell you where i am percent wise but i can easily do 500 i always know where 500 stitches are because obviously 10 by 10 square is 100 stitches so i just need to do five um of those squares so that's fine so that is chinese flowers so i need to do 500 stitches on those um two and 25 so that's that one done so alternative reality obviously i've done so i can cross that one out and then hem the eighth i need to do a thousand stitches now i do have henry the eighth the reason i say a thousand stitches on henry the eighth is because again it's like a very blocky product project um this is artwork is by hans holbein chart by heaven and earth designs i'm doing this one on 18 count two over one so i need to do a thousand stitches on him and that'd be nice because he's just easy um so that's that one so that's alternative reality done henry the eighth i need to do so they're projects that are over a hundred thousand stitches then i've got my non-full coverage so these are like my long dog, long dog samplers um the drawn thread company um anything else that's not full coverage really so sans Susi is one of them i've got to do a thousand stitches on sans Susi, and i'm stitching this on 32 count two over two um i'm doing it in the colorway 3820 i think 3820 obviously cxe threads it's a long dog sampler, Sans Souci. And the fabric is the Sparkle Snow again. I think, oh, do you know what? Actually, I did this one. I did Sans Souci last month. I did a thousand stitches on, I'm sure I did. I did a thousand stitches on Sans Souci. I did, so I've done that one. That was another one I did. I don't know why, but I did. So, let me show you where we're at where i am yeah there was a reason why so um again another mess up with bloody fabric look how far over i am what's wrong with me look how far over here i mean that is the end okay thank goodness that is the end but still look how much space is over here i mean what a bloody joke what's wrong with me so yes it's fine it's it's fine it's fine if I want to get it um, framed because I think it is like two and a half inches but still I mean I don't know really what's going on I'm losing my touch don't know what's going on but anyway this is what it looks like I'm gonna see if I can do a little bit close up 32 count two over two I'm actually falling back in love with this one again I'm loving this yellow it's really beautiful so yeah, I've done that one. Sam Susi is done. I don't think I'm going mad. But then I could be wrong. I don't know. So, um, that's one less I have to do this month, which is good. And then, 
one we haven't seen for a while is the drawn thread autumn autumn jumble i've got to do one square now i probably won't do one square i'll probably do a few but this is where i'm at the moment um this is what it will look like let me see if i can there we go drawn threads autumn jump autumn jump autumn jumble so i'm doing this on a, um, a very slightly grayish fabric 32 count and this is two over one over two i'm doing this and it's this is actually really beautiful i'm actually really loving doing this piece so this is where i am i am so as you as you can tell one two three four five so i've only got um five of these left so i might just finish this line look at that isn't that gorgeous this is 32 count one over two um yeah it's just so delicate it's really beautiful now ordinarily i'd say that this isn't enough coverage which is why i do two over two on 32 count but this is so delicate I think it gets away with it and this is a mixture of um, needlepoint sing silk dinky dyes so I'm doing this one with the, all the call for col cool, called for colors so dinky dyes uh, needle needlepoint silk um, and I don't think I've got the mill hill beads but I do need to get them so that will just finish it off so yeah so i need to do one square and like i said i'll probably end up finishing it um not finishing it finishing the line otherwise it just it's just gonna be a waste of, of time isn't it to get it out just to do one box where is there it is okay okie dokie so that is autumn jumble goes back in there and then last but not least i believe so it's sansi soon autumn jumbo um two and 25 oh so the bookshelf is done so i had to do oh no is it a thousand so i still have to do a thousand on my bookshelf is that right yeah i can't remember now so i still got to do a thousand on the bookshelf which I've already shown you it's the one with all the books um not the bountiful not the big big one but the one with all the books i've got to do a thousand stitches on that and then 338 stitches on grace face two so grace face two is this one char chartered by heaven and earth designs and the artwork is by josephine wall and i'm very close to this one i'm very close to a finish on this one i am at i don't even know what percentage i'm at but um i'm doing this on 18 count two over one and that's where we are so far so again this is just color completing filling in the blanks that's all we're doing for this one so yeah 338 stitches which i know it sounds like a bit of a random number but what i did is i looked at the amount of stitches i needed to do by the end of the year and split it between how many times it came up on my whip go board and that's how many stitches i need in order to finish it by the end of the year so i will have a finish on this one by the end of the year and actually all of the ones that are over 50 percent. so my grace face two my peacock love the um, bookshelf the one i showed you um or told you about they're the three i should get finished this year so that's exciting so um that is everything stitching so if this is all you've come for that's fantastic thank you for joining me um and i i really really appreciate it. any every single one of you that comes i've got i don't even know how many subscribers i've got i've almost got four thousand subscribers that's amazing and i'm i'm just so appreciative to every single one of you who um took the time to subscribe to my channel that's just so nice um yes so that's what you came here for 
Oh my God, I don't even know how to approach this next point. If that's all you came here for, thank you very much and I will see you in my next video. So, um, what's been going on this month? I don't even know where to start. I've literally, this is probably the first day that I've, actually no, it's not the first day I've not cried because I broke down in church this morning. So, um, I am a little bit at war with, say at war with my neighbour. Um, don't know how to broach this. My, so the lady that I bought my land from, this land that I've got at the moment, um, she recently has sold her house and everything and moved away, but she still technically owns two pieces of land. One is my piece of land that it, well, I say my, is the one that I want to buy between me and my next door neighbor. Um, however, if I take this back, so neighbor one, I'm going to say neighbor one and neighbor two rather than use names. Neighbor one, the one that sold up and moved. She phoned me up five years ago when I was in the UK um, in tears because her house was about to be repossessed and was asking me if I would if I would buy that piece of land, the land that I really wanted to buy. It's basically connected to my land. It gives me an extra like 18 acres. So that would take my acreage up to 83 and it'd be a perfect cross country course. That's exactly what I want to use it for, a cross country course. And at the time, you know, I was working like two, three jobs, just trying to save, you know, to come out here. I didn't really have a huge amount of money. Um, and obviously we needed the money to buy the stables and put the barn up and everything. So the money that I had in my account, I kind of had to kind of leave, but I did have something that I could give, I could give her. So I said to her, I explained the situation. I said, look, you know, I don't have a huge amount of money, um, but I can give you, um, 18,000, was it eight, $15,000? Yeah, it was $15,000. Um, which actually then she was able to because they're really 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 fast at repossessing out here It's not like the UK where it takes bloody months to repossess someone like if you stop paying for like one month you get repossessed It's, it's crazy um, So she was in tears because she was about to be repossessed and um, You know, I think she was behind on like a month and a half on a mortgage so um but she also had other bills to pay, like I don't think she paid her property tax or anything like that, so that was quite a lot. So I said, yeah, that's fine, I'll help you out um, so you don't get repossessed, and gave her the 15,000, but I kind of said to her, because obviously I didn't want it to go into the abyss, you know, would it be okay to put a down payment on the land that I really want to buy? And she was like, yep, 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 that's fine, we did an agreement, she signed it, I signed it, happy days, happy families. So, Fast forward from that five years to two and a half years, which is two and a half years back. She then sold another property that was like next to the piece of land that I want to buy. So you've got like my land, you've got the bit that I want to buy, and then you've got the bit that neighbor two bought. Now she, neighbor one, did not tell neighbor two that the land wasn't for sale, that we had an agreement on it. Neighbor two wanted to buy the lands that I want to buy from neighbor one. However, she said to her, instead of saying, no, there's an agreement on it already, you know, it's kind of like off, off the limit. She was like, oh, well, you know, let's, you know, see what we can do. So she obviously took that as, okay, that's fine. Then obviously it's, it's, you know, available, even though it wasn't. And she then, number one, then got into a mess with the mortgage again and needed us more money. So neighbor two did like a similar thing to me and said, that's fine, I'll give you your money to help you out for your house being repossessed, but you know, I wanna put like some money, I wanna lease the property next door, which is the property that I wanna buy. So an agreement was set. Um, neighbor number one didn't, I don't think she even read the agreement because there was a stipulation in there that after, two, after 10 years that neighbor two had um, the right to buy it. Now, Obviously this is like a major issue um, because she's basically sold this land to two people and taken money for it from both. Um, but this isn't the issue. The issue is for the last two and a half years with my dealings with neighbor one, she's always said to me that, that she's happy to own a finance the land with me because you know we've got a really good relationship or we had a really good relationship. When neighbor two moved in, I have no idea what's happened 
but she has told so many lies about me to neighbour one and she has just caused like such a nightmare you know she's just lied about things she's made things up you know because she obviously wants the property that I want as well um she's told neighbour one that I'm about to be repossessed that I'm not which I'm not I'm I'm a really bad payer I'm this I'm that I'm I'm I like just the worst person so our agreement came up or comes up on the 19th of June this this month and I've been back and forth with her agent saying you know is there like we're coming close to the end of the agreement now can we put in place you know a, an agreement for like how much the the acres are going to be because obviously that wasn't that wasn't decided at the time of the agreement because things change you know prices fluctuate of acreage so we didn't put a price in it was just that when it came up we'd buy it so um he then went really really quiet which is really odd so then i messaged him again like i didn't obviously i wasn't messaging him loads i just messaged him like twice and then left it two weeks and then last week messaged him and said like is it okay if i get a company to come and check out like how much it's going to cost to get the trees cut down because one of the stipulations with Nova 2 leasing my land or the land um, was that they were going to maintain it well they didn't now is a bloody forest growing up so that's something else I'm going to have to pay for if I get this land so um, but that's by the by so anyway Thursday Wednesday Thursday this week um, Travis oh sorry I shouldn't use his name the land agent phone um, messaged me and said you know land's still available we need to sort out um, you know how much it's gonna be per acre but only traditional financing and I was just like what do you mean traditional financing at that point I was like I think I was just having a blonde moment as being thick and he said bank loan so I was just like what as in that's not what we agree the whole two well the whole time that I've been talking to her she was fine owner financing so I, that obviously put me in a massive predicament because last year two years ago when I got here I can't even remember when I got here it was decided between me and my accountant that we would make I mean yes I'm going into personal stuff now and please don't berate me but um, it was decided that we would make my salary really low because then that meant that my business which I was starting to build had less payroll taxes to pay out so we set my we set my wages at an all-time low so my w-2s which is the end of year it proves what you earned that year are like on the floor so I just earn enough to enable me to be um, accepted for health insurance at a certain rate um, and also we didn't extend my dad's visa because we didn't see did, we didn't see the needs um, so now my dad can't be a copay uh, not copay a co-signee a co-signee um, so now if she told me this this is the thing okay this is the thing for everything if she had told me this two years ago I would have made sure that I looked in a really decent position with the bank so I would have made my wages like six grand a month and then just obviously out of that six grand just taken what I needed like the bare minimum uh, and then put the rest back into my uh, business bank account and then it rolled on for the next so you know it wasn't six grand that I would take and then just spend it would be just reinvested so I'd get paid the money as a salary it'd get reinvested back into the business so it showed that the reinvestment but it also showed that you know I potentially could afford the loan um, I did go to the bank and they were like you know what your your income is just too low to sustain another mortgage um, or actually what they were gonna do because my mortgage is due up for renewal and they were just gonna add it on but because I'm an E2 investor um, they then have to have two years worth of tax returns um, and you know this that, and the other so the point being the point I'm trying to make is if she had told me this two years ago I would have put in um, I would have put in um, I don't even know what the word is I would have made changes to everything so that we would have we would have got my dad's visa renewed and I would have made myself 
like paying myself I would have made it so I was paying myself a decent salary so that they could see on paper that oh actually yeah she can afford it and now she's completely taken that away um I am up shit's creek with that paddle I mean I don't really know what else to say I don't know how else to say it now the one blessing in disguise is that neighbor two um, I mean, and I don't mean this disrespectfully. This is just the scenario, the situation. Our husband's been off work for eight months. They've just had a million dollar house bill. Um, they haven't paid the contractors because actually the neighbor that bought my other neighbor, which is neighbor three, who bought the property from neighbor one is so nice, but they're, um, they're house builders and they built neighbor two's house. And they are about to, I don't think you can foreclose, but they're about to put a lien on it because they haven't paid them. Um, in order for neighbor two to get out of the lease, so neighbor one could sell me the land, she, neighbor one promised neighbor two that she could buy, this, see this is all complicated, isn't it? So she could buy another piece of property, which I didn't want anyway. But from, listen, from hearing what the land agent said, she, she hasn't paid her a dime. Now, I think what's happened and I think what's happened, and I'm hoping that this is the case and it's not going to be the latter, which I'll tell you about in a second, is that neighbour two has a homeowner loan, not like a, a home loan or whatever, from neighbour one and she's not paid her a dime. She's gone back on a promise, she's gone back on their agreement, blah, 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 this, that and the other. So neighbour one is like, right, I do not want to do any home financing. I just want, you know, to get this. I want to cut. Oh, and it's to be cut and dry and to, um, you know, that's it, done. Um, now, I totally appreciate that, absolutely. I mean, if it was me and I'd been burnt already, I would have probably done the same thing. But what she doesn't realise is that because I'm a visa holder, I'm not a full resident. Um, if I was a full resident, they wouldn't have even gone into my, um, into my financials. Uh, my loan guy would have, would have just added it onto my mortgage. He would have said, you know... Um, that's fine, we'll just add it onto your mortgage. Um, and that's exactly what they would have done. It was, it's called something like a, a, a less documentation something else because I would have been either a green card holder or a, a resident. Because I'm a visa holder, obviously stipulations for me are completely different with the bank. So, you know, it kind of, it, realistically, it needed to be the other way around. You know, neighbor two could have then got a bank loan um, because she's a resident here, but I still would need the, the owner financing because I kind of have to. Um, so, um, anyway, so going back to um, neighbours to financial situation, so she's probably got a six grand mortgage. I know she's got a, I know she's got a, like a new car, so she's probably got a car payment as well. She hasn't paid na neighbour one any money for this land that was, she was supposed to um, pay for. Um, and my and neighbor three who built the house is about to put a lien on a house um, so it's it's all it's all a bloody mess now I just found out that my neighbors the other neighbors that are on the on the main road are actively looking for some land to buy so they can build a house now my issue is now is if that gets out if someone tells them that this land is available, which it is, because but it's the land that I want to buy. They will snap it up because it's on the back end of, of of their main road, and then I've lost. I've lost it completely. So I am hoping and praying and praying and hoping and praying some more that. Uh, and my dad's going to write an email tonight to tra to um to the landowner because this is the other thing as well. I, I. So we had this discussion on Wednesday. Me and me and this and the land um and the land. Um, agent um, and I've known him for so long everything's over text you know after getting that text saying that he shall only do traditional financing I literally I felt like my butt fell out of my body like totally like everything just drained um, and this has been so stressful for me so then I left it a day and then the next day I sent him like a really long text and it was really nice uh, I wasn't arsy or anything like that. I just explained the situation that, you know, this is the situation now that I'm in. Um, because obviously if I, ha I wasn't warned about this two years ago. I've not been a in a position to kind of um, manipulate anything. Not manipulate, that's the wrong word. But um, put into, um, put anything in, um, in order to sort of main to make sure that I can get 
alone. So that's kind of been taken away from me now as an option. I still absolutely want to get the land, or I, I said I still absolutely want to buy the land and not go back on our agreement. Um, but, and, and thankfully he didn't reply to it, and he didn't reply on Saturday or, or today either. But I kid you not, I'm finding this so stressful to deal with. I have spent, I have not been sleeping, I've not really been eating. Um, I'm crying every single day and I'm not doing I'm not saying this because I need your pity I'm just saying that this is like really affecting me um, because you know this has been going on for this is not just something that has just happened um, neighbor one told me about this bloody lease that was on this land um, two years ago when I first got here and you know she kept dangling the carrot she kept saying oh we don't i don't know if i can even sell that to you anymore you know this that, and the other and obviously it's caused so much stress um so this has been a constant stress for years um so i i kind of i just i can't deal with bad news with with him coming back to me and going right no she's still you know she's still not going to go for it um now i don't know what sort of financial situation she's in I'm, I'm hoping this is neighbor one i'm hoping that actually she's in an okay financial situation because she bought her la she um bought a house for like five hundred thousand, and she sold her place for 950 which means she should have a couple of hundred grand in the bank so she should be sitting pretty at the moment okay now i I don't want to have a homeowner's loan for like 20 years, 30 years. That's not, I don't want to do that to her and I don't want to do that to me. All I'm asking, and this is what I've put in that, that mail, that message, is that you give me three years. So basically, well, two and a half because we're in May now. So you give us the time, if it's okay, to get this barn built. Um, that should be open by January so that I can then give the bank two... Um, tax returns so like two the two and a half years is like i've got two decent tax returns by then hopefully my my turmeric supplement will be um will be you know good to go you know that'll be flying out the door i've got a lot more clientele with a massage my barn is full so financially i'm in a much much better situation then after that three years i can then go to the bank and say right this is what i've paid on it so far we've put down payment and this is what's been paid so far so i need a loan for x amount which probably be like sixty thousand. okay now what i will also stipulate in the agreement with susan is that i can pay her more so you know for example if it comes out that i mean just heaven forbid i mean this would be the best case scenario if it comes out that my turmeric takes off and I'm ringing my dad going, dad, can you come out and help? Because I can't get this turmeric out the door quick enough, which would be the best situation to be in. Um, and I can afford to pay her 2,500 a month. Well, within that three years, the whole thing will be paid off. She'll be paid completely. But what it does mean is that at the end of the three years, she is gonna get the rest of the money. I'm not asking for a homeowner's loan for 10 or 15, 20 years. That's not, um, that's not acceptable and I, and I, I, know, I know that. Um, it's just a, you know, I, I have to get credit with the bank now for the next two years and the only way I can do that is by um, making sure that going forward now um, that I'm in a situation to do that and um, but in the meantime I want you to be seeing some money you know for you to get a payment now that's all very well if she's in a financial situation where that's okay great but if she's in a dire situation financially um i don't really know what to do now i obviously i don't know her financial situation and it's not up to um her, her land agent to tell me that which is fine um but uh my dad is going to send an email to say um to explain the whole situation that he's happy to be on as a co-sign um you know explain that you know i'm actually a qualified accountant which i am um, and I'm very savvy with money, you know, I'm, I'm very responsible business-wise with money, um, and that all of my creditors get paid, and if he wants a statement proving that, you know, I've paid my bank for the last 10 years on time every single month, and she wants a proof of both of my credit files, both one, my US credit file, um, that uh, is like my repayment is excellent, it's in the excellent, um, my credit, um, score isn't amazing because obviously I've, I was here new 
and I started from zero. So I, it's unlike an, like an 18 year old that's been able to build up their credit over a period of time. I've literally only, so I think my credit now is like 705, but literally last year it started with nothing. So my main aim was to take out, like is not as many credit cards as I can, but credit, loads of credit cards. I think I've got five now and keep them at like 20%, but keep them rolling over at 20%. So pay them off, put 20% on them, pay them off. And it's just to build my credit. So I've got on there, you know, excellent with regards to payment, but obviously what is detrimental to my credit file and what keeps me down is the fact that I haven't had my credit for a long period of time. Now, if you looked at my credit file in the UK, which is I think 986 or 989, I think that's what my credit score in the UK is. Again, it's on excellent, but you know, when you look at the um, the time that I've had credit, I got my, Bar my Barclay card platinum card when I was 18 and I'm now 40. And again, I've never missed a payment with Barclay card. Um, you know, that is, I've had that credit for a long time, but coming to a different country, you start at zero and that's where I've had to build it. Um, so yeah, this is the situation. Now I've just found out that my neighbors who back onto me, um, they're actively looking for land. I'm now freaking out that if, neighbor number one um, doesn't agree to some kind of agreement with me, something so that we can take the, the land off the market, that we've lost it. I've lost it. And I know for a fact they'll just buy it and she wants to build houses. And it's like, I, I bought this property because I'm not surrounded by houses. And I know this is making me sound pathetic and oh, you know, I can, I can hear it now, people saying, and I, I appreciate that, you know, you should be so lucky that you are where you are. I get that, I totally get that. But my, my visioning for this barn and this business is that we'll have a cross-country course, you know, we'll have a solarium, we'll have a therapeutic, we'll have gallops, we, we've got a therapy and rehabilitation centre, um, and we are the place that everyone wants to be, and we want to be able to offer all these things. Now, yes, I've got 64.9 acres or whatever at the moment, which, yes, I know it's a lot, um, but that piece of property um, is a perfect property for a cross-country course because it's like it's so undulating you know you can build steps you can build um, um, you know water um, water jumps you know um, you oh, it's just you know you can build banks I mean it's just fantastic and it's like it basically sort of almost cuts off from neighbor number two who clearly has it in for me and absolutely hates me and I, I don't know why um, so at this point I think dad's gonna write this email and send it to me and it's not gonna be like a begging email it's just gonna be a like you know what Holly is a good bet she's working really hard to get her business up and going you know she always pays her creditors first I will be a co-sign you know, I won't let this this go either. Um, that you know, if you want to do some kind of like, okay, we'll we'll, we'll do a six month thing, okay? Um, we'll put together an agreement, a six month agreement, and if she even misses one payment, then you take the land back. See, this is the other thing. It's like no risks to her because we'll put in the agreement that if I miss my payment, I've lost my deposit and I've lost all the money I've paid her so far, so she can just sell it anyway. So there's no like real risk to her. Does that make sense? Um, yes, we are probably going to have to be like, yeah, we're probably going to have to be, we're probably going to have to compromise massively with regards to, um, her and what she gets if, if I ever don't pay. But I mean, for example, like I've got four clients tomorrow. That's, that's my monthly payment just there in one, in like, just in one day. Um, you know, that's my monthly payment to her. So and I said to her that I'd pay her like a certain amount this month, uh, sorry, a certain amount for the rest of this year per month. And then next year will be a hundred dollars more for the whole entire year, every single month. And then the year after that, again, will be another hundred dollars more. So she'll also have a regular income. And then obviously she'll then have um, what, the, what we get from the bank afterwards. But if I'm in a situation, if I'm in a financial situation where I can afford to pay her an extra grand a month, she'll get that grand a month because it just means at the end of the three years, I'm, bo I'm borrowing less from the bank. And that, that's great for me because it means that my mortgage is less. So, you know, it works both ways. And I am so desperate. I'm, I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come across really stupid now. I even, and my dad was like, don't be so stupid. <laughs> um, I even looked at how much um, it costs, how much you can sell a kidney for. I mean, this is how, I mean, this is how stupid and how desperate I am to, to 
to be able to get this land. Um, and as it happens, I can get like 150 grand for a long and about 100 grand for a kidney, but that's by the by. I mean, it was a kind of, how can I raise this money? And as I was talking to my dad, I was like, oh dad, did you know that you can get 150 grand for a long? <laughs> oh, honestly. But um, yeah, this, is, this piece of land has, been, has always been in the plans and I just don't know what to do. And I'm just hoping and praying the next time I have a conversation with you, that it's going to be good news and we would have put together something but I mean so our agreement comes up on the 19th of June this month but they've actually extended it a month and I don't know they didn't do that for me they did it for something else but I'm hope but now we've got that extension it gives us time to kind of hopefully come together with some sort of agreement and I have no idea why she hates me so much I mean you know when we first bought the land in 2014 she had someone that was um, that had her front part of her land that was um, uh, planting crops, and she said to me, "Oh, is there is there any way that um, because we when we bought it we had to have for some reason we had to have a hundred foot of road all the way up to our to where we are, okay? So that obviously that impinged a lot on on their crops. So they said they asked me, would it be okay if?" Um, we can still use that extra, I think it was like 50 foot that they were using of our land. And we were like, yeah, no problem. You know, we're not there anyway. And then um, they had hay fields out the back, which is like, what is my land now? They were, they had hay for their horses. Um, that was when her husband was alive. And so, you know, they, they got in contact with me and were like, are you, would you mind if we still used, you know, your land and, and, you know, cut hay and took the hay for our horses? And we were like, yeah, sure. No problem. You know, we're not there. Um, and then when she had, um, when she sold that land to neighbour two, um, she used the money to um, do something with like, she's got a, uh, a little cabin, which is really, really sweet. And she was going to convert that into an Airbnb. So that's what she did. She kind of put some money into it. And, um, but she couldn't afford to get a road um, put in. But as it happened, if you go up all the way up my road, because I've almost got like a flagship, a flagpole kind of, um, it's very difficult to explain. I've got like a flagpole property. I'm like three quarters of a mile off the road, off the main road, which is nice because I'm behind everything. Um, but if you go up my road and then you kind of, before you go through the trees to go to the rest of my land, you kind of hang a left, you, it goes straight to her cabin. So because she couldn't afford to put a road in at that time, she asked me for her to start her business, whether her, all of her customers could use my road. And I was like, yeah, no problem. You know, I haven't got a problem with that. So, and you know, and then, you know, we helped her house from being <laughs> repossessed. And I just feel, don't get me wrong, I don't do things for people to have things in return, but like, I just wish she would give a little bit of consideration to some of the things that we've done um, to help her in the past. And, you know, all I'm, I've not gone back on my word that we were going to buy the land at all. And I haven't gone back on any agreement that we've had. Um, it's just that if she was so adamant that she only wanted to own a financing, I wish she had told me two years ago, because now I can't do anything about it. I can't do anything with that information. And I'm really up shit's creek with that at all. So I'm really, so going back to what I was going to say is, I'm really hoping that my dad can put together a really lovely email for, for her land agent and she, the blessing in disguise is she doesn't know yet that my other neighbour, the, um, the one that backs onto my land, wants to buy that. So at the moment, the only people that can buy it, because it's pretty much landlocked, is neighbour two or me, because it's in between us. So I'm hoping that she just sees neighbour two and me as the only two that can buy it. And obviously neighbour two can't buy it because she's just got so much going out and she hasn't even paid her, you know, for the land that she has promised, you know, to buy. Uh, and I'm just hoping that she just has a little bit of faith and just give me, gives me a little bit of time um, and that we put this email together and that, um, and that her land agent can turn around to her and say, do you know what, Susan, actually, this is a good deal. You know, this is this, you know, you'll get a monthly payment. Um, and we're only talking three years, which flies by. I mean, it took her a year and a half to sell a house. Um, and on top of that, her land agent was paying her mortgage. I mean, she, I think he's like a friend as well, but he was paying a mortgage to keep her from being repossessed every single month. So obviously she had to then pay him back when she sold. But um, 
you know, he's not just a land agent. He is, he's a little bit more to her than that. So I'm just hoping that, that he is kind of on our side and can really plead our case. And, can, and I know for a fact that if he says to her, you know, go for it, she will. And I'm also hoping that because I think he thought that we could get a traditional mortgage, because of all the crap that's been going on with next door with like neighbour number two and the fact that she hasn't done what she said she was going to do and she's gone back on her agreement, I'm hoping that he has actually said to her, no, when you deal with Holly, get traditional financing, you know, get it paid, get it done and, you know, cut the tie. So you've only got one piece of land to deal with with like neighbour number two and I'm hoping that um, that's what she's that's what he's told her just to basically get rid of this piece of land that's landlocked and is now an absolute ball lake to her um, it's basically like a, a ball and chain um, but now obviously he knows that we're not in a position to buy it from a traditional financing perspective that he's like okay well we do need a plan B then and that uh, he doesn't then send me a, a message saying well we're going to have to put it on the open market then you've lost it now, thankfully, he didn't, but I swear, every single time my phone went off, I was having, like, heart palpitations that I was going to get a message from him going, she's not going to go for it. It's, it's like, a non-negotiable. So, um, my dad is also... The other reason I'm sending him an email is that I can't deal with it mentally. I can't deal with the torment and the torture. So, he's also writing an email, um, the same, the same um, to the land agent to say, look, Holly is really stressed at the moment and like um she just can't deal with this right now so any negotiating any conversation just come through me as in my dad because you know he's not attached to the piece of land um emotionally that I am you know for him it's just a piece of land that okay well we either have a cross-country course we don't it's no skin of his nose it's not really going to make any difference to to whether I've got you know um stables being filled or not it's not something that is going to prevent my stables from being filled it's just something that I really want to offer my clients so he's not emotionally involved with it so you're dealing with someone that isn't emotional now I do feel a little bit sorry for him that he's dealing with three emotional women like literally he is like me neighbor one and neighbor two um so I also don't know if neighbor number two is putting effort down because the whole point of her building a house where she built which is like almost right on the edge of the land is because she was told that she could buy the land um, so now she's put her house right, oh, right over by the property line and that's now causing an issue. So we're not, I'm also not sure whether she, she's really making a, a big thing out of the fact that she was promised that land by neighbour number one and now she's going back on that agreement. I don't know. So anyway, um, it's a big mess and I just don't want to, I need this news to come over from dad because he has a, a different way of dealing with me because he knows that I am really sensitive to this um, and I you know I've got clients to deal with and I've got things to do and I have to I really have to take my mind off things I can't be worrying about getting that text from the land agent that would just devastate me so um, you know dad will never negotiate something that isn't doable because at the end of the day we're a team so I think we're going to leave it to my dad to do the negotiating and it, it may help man to man you know um, it may help man to man so we'll see but that's kind of where I am that's where my headspace is um, that's where a lot of you know I haven't really been doing cross stitch because I've got to be in a good headspace to do it as well um, and I just was in the I was just on that I think it was all Thursday Wednesday or Thursday I think it was Thursday actually that I was told I couldn't think about anything I couldn't eat anything I couldn't think about anything I was just moving around the house just oh my god I couldn't concentrate on anything I couldn't get my head out of my butt um it's just a mess it's just a mess so and between you and me I, I don't think she's being very fair because we've never discussed anything else we've only ever discussed owner financing this is a thing this is the thing, like, nothing has ever been discussed. I mean, she always knew that I didn't want to take out a second mortgage because I already had a mortgage and I didn't want to be starting a business with two mortgages. So she always, you know, she always knew that. Um, now, obviously, the issue is that I can't take out a mortgage. Not that I don't want to take out a mortgage. I can't. Um, because I made decisions 
on the basis that I wasn't going to be taking out a large loan. Now, should I have been a little bit more intelligent potentially and realised that people don't always do what they say and they go back on their word all the time? I'm dealing with me, unfortunately, and my experience of me is the fact that if I say I'll do something, I do it. And if, I, if I've promised someone that I'll do something a certain way, then I always honour my promises. <laughs> Um, and not everyone is me and maybe I should have been a little bit less naive and maybe I should have made sure that my salary is high enough so if it came to it that um, you know that was still an option and that I hadn't just been putting all of my eggs in one basket and and maybe I've done this to myself maybe I have done this to myself maybe I have done this to myself but you just trust people don't you you trust what they say and you trust their integrity and that they're decent people Oh, I don't know. I sound pathetic. I get it. Just don't know what to do. So anyway, that is what's going on in my life right now. Um, I can't even think about the barn being built right this second. This is just taking over my headspace right now. Um, so, yeah, I'm really sorry that you've kind of got... Um, and me without the spark because normally, normally I'm like hi how's everyone doing I'm not this and the other. I'm a really really happy person and I'm really struggling to be that happy person right now and it's not something I can even put a smile on my face for because it's just for me it's absolutely devastating and is what it is but hey ho we'll just have to see we'll have to see what happens we'll have to just hope and pray that the land agent does go back to neighbour one and say do you know what let's just do this because you know you can trust her and she's got a co-signer anyway and we're talking three years we're not talking ten um you know in fact if she is in a little bit of a situation financially potentially having something coming in every single month with a bulk payment at the end of it at the end of three years could potentially be a, you know a blessing in disguise because it means that she doesn't really have to worry about too much because she's got money coming in monthly so i don't know I'm just speculating. Don't really know. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, apologies again. It was such a a miserable, <laughs> a really miserable video. I don't mean it to be. It's just um, what's going on in my life right now. And, you know, I did think twice about do I just put this video out? Or do I just not bother with this month's video because I'm going through a low point? But no, I just thought, no, just do it. And I knew, I know that you guys would understand because a lot of you have followed my journey. And there are going to be trials and tribulations and there are going to be great days and there's going to be days where there's not, it's not so great. Isn't that just life? That's just life. It's ups and downs. And I think, you know, um, I am honest with you about what's going on in my life. And at the moment, I've just hit a point where I'm at a real low point in my life. Um... Or, or what's going on in my life um, so yeah just I just can't fake everything being okay when it's not I'm just not very good at that so I wanted to bring this video out I wanted to show you my stitching I wanted to kind of talk about my plans but I wanted to be honest about what's going on as well so anyway I am gonna sign off I'm gonna start editing this video and um, I really hope this doesn't change my relationship that I've got with you all um, keep the comments coming I love seeing comments it's, it's really lovely to kind of open up my phone in the morning and see, you know, all the comments on YouTube. I do appreciate it. And um, I will see you next month, hopefully, hopefully with some better news. Oh, I'm praying. Please just pray. Pray, 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 pray that this works out, that this works out. It would be like the most amazing thing ever. Anyway, I mean, my application went you know I've, I've just applied for my e2 visa rather than change of status my application went two weeks uh last week it went last week so that's all gone so that's good um but that's a good thing so pray that that comes through as well yeah uh, i should be going to england in the next four months so hey ho right thank you so much for joining me everyone i am going to go now and i will see you in my next video cheers guys bye